What do you mean? There was metal in the tree. In the tree? Oh no! Oh yeah. Oh my god. Well, this isn't wrecked, it's just like sharp. Holy cow, like not even. Now that. Look at that. That's a broken. Yeah. So we gotta replace the teeth and that. That's gonna. Wow. Yeah. Change. This one's broken. That one's broken. Yeah. Look at them all, they're all chipped. Right well, there, all we saw through metal, and yeah. it wasn't, it was hard metal, it wasn't uh, like mild steel. About a hundred years old, this log. All these rings. <clears throat> it's about a hundred years old. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's where we hit metal. So this would have been, we, this would have been about About 40, about 40 years ago, somebody put a nail in that tree. About 40 years ago, or some other piece of metal. About 40, 42 years. <coughs> Maybe longer. Yeah. Look at the nail. It's a. Uh, oh, see that's a cut nail. That's why this they made such. Yep. This is an old nail. Yep. It's a, it's a cut, a cut nail. So this is really almost almost wrought iron, because yep. it was very hard. The noise that it made was different than mild steel. Once the log was cut into lengths, the pieces were reassembled into its original form. I think we're ready. All right. So, so what are we doing? How do we start we this? Doing? What do you want? What do you want? To... Uh, tell me about your background in the sawmill. You bought it in. When did you? Yeah, I was trying to. Uh, my, my original partner uh, and I would, uh, we were looking for property to do different things. He had his projects and I had mine. And the sawmill property was for sale. And this was about 1985, somewhere about there. And. Uh, at the time, uh, it was during the Carter presidency, and uh, one of the uh, features of the Carter presidency was 18% uh, interest for mortgages. And we had arranged for a mortgage uh, with uh, the National Iron Bank, and, uh, but <coughs> the owner of it, Joe Bates, because this was the Bates Sawmill, said that he would give us the mortgage personally for 8%, but there was only one proviso. He would do that, but only if we ran it as a sawmill. And Joe also said that he'd stay with us for three months and show us how things work. <laughs> and so we did, and uh, we just really fell into it. You know, the, the people we met, the culture, the, the customers that we had, uh, we picked up enough uh, in that three months uh, to be able to produce lumber, and, and then we kind of went in our own direction after a while, where we specialized in... Uh, in addition to casual sales, which was people coming in and buying something in, in their pickup truck, or special orders of buildings, entire buildings, which were uh, usually timber frame or, or a uh, hybrid version of a timber frame or an actual timber frame. And with those projects, we would do basically design build. And uh, so we kind of had our own, uh, evolved into a, a somewhat of a different business model than what it had been before, and we did very little wholesale production, uh, which would be uh, uh, sawing out something for a truckload to be resold. And Joe had done a fair amount of that, but we ended up not doing very much of that, and doing mostly direct sales to the end user. And uh, so uh, it, was, uh, it was a good business. and, and uh, uh, it was hard work, but we really liked it. Well, uh, around um, 10 years ago, or a little before, my, my first partner retired. And we had another partner that we brought into the business, 
who had started to work for us in a work study program out of high school. And uh, so uh, he decided to go his own way, and uh, I, uh, uh, in effect, uh, bought out my, my original partner and just finished paying him off this last December, past December. And in the meantime, we rented out space. I did some occasional work, um, occasional special orders, and we rented out space. And uh, when um, Eric, my son-in-law, kind of was curious about the <laughs> curious about the, the business, and uh, although uh, I was cautioned not to be luring him into this. Uh, he's retired military, right? right. Um, you know that 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 wasn't. You know, my my daughter didn't really want me to lure him into this and get him involved, but he kind of fell for it. That was about two years ago. Uh, about, yeah, a year. Well, it started about two years ago. I got married yeah, two years yeah. ago, so it was uh, a little after that. So a little. We had a lot of fixing up to do, and still do. We still do have a lot of so, fixing up to and do. Then, uh, but I I just I enjoy it. It's. Uh, there's something about taking a, a, a rough log, just a log that somebody cut down, and, 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 and actually able to build a building or whatever, whether it be a chicken coop or a, or, yeah. or a, a post and beam. Or a home. Or a home. I mean, yeah. this is our, you know, this is where we do sugar. We make maple, maple yeah, syrup, maple too. Syrup and and all this wood we mill just, just, to, uh, just to build this. I mean, it's just very, there's something about it that, it is hard work, but I, I hate to use the word soothing, but there's something about it. It really feels like an accomplishment for the day when you can take logs and, and make lumber that you could build a building with, and now it's just a uh, people's project. This was a scale model uh, of a project we did in Kent. How long ago? Uh, a good 25 years or so. The original owner of the building, it's a book house, a bookstore now in Kent. The original owner had uh, a different uh, business in there. The custom millwork was done by Bert Fitch of Falls Village. So we designed this for him and had it, and had it built, delivered the materials in Kent. And that's the kind of thing we did. We would make for, for, for habitable structures, a, a home or, or, or a business like that, we would make a scale model. And uh, that helped our customers see exactly how it would be as, as opposed to trying to read prints and get a conception of it. And when we did, when we did homes, often uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of our customers, the, the wife, would put a little furniture in the model to see how the space worked out. So that we would make the changes to the model rather than have the building underway and then uh, as an afterthought changes made. And uh, so that was a good, a good portion of our business. We can't go on a ride to go get lunch or whatever without, we did this barn, we did this house, we did this, you know, since 1985. I mean, it really is, it's, 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 it's amazing how many things that he's had About 10, 12 years ago, you know, he, you know, started doing other things and, you know, and um, I guess age too, you know, and, you know, he kind of retired. But then since I showed interest, he's uh, back, at little, it. back at it a little bit. We only do a couple days. We only saw a mill a couple days a week. It's hard work. It's very hard. It's, uh, I mean, I just turned 50. I'm in good shape and it, it, it kicks my butt. That's for sure. Now, you you were a professional infantryman. I was I was in the army for twenty years, six months, and five days, and uh, my last deployment was uh, a little rough. And uh, the the army said uh, that's enough, and you're done. So I retired, and then, uh, like I said, I met I met my wife, his daughter, and uh, 
and um, it's just uh, you know this. I have enough things to do. We bought a house that was built in the 1800s, but um, it's just a, it's a. It, I guess the best way to say it is, there's a sawmill here. It's a shame to have it sit idle and not do anything. It's a shame. I mean, it's the sawmill itself is over a hundred years old. I was going to ask it's, you. It's 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 old. It's old and it's still. Um, you know, it's a belt driven. It's ele electric, but it's belt driven, and um, it saws very well. And and I've gone online and I've you know researched. They still people are still using these same type sawmills. So it's a little hard to get parts. <laughs> But um, so now, if a part breaks or whatnot, it's uh, we have to go through um, you know some different ways of getting you know and getting them built and made specifically. But I mean, um, it, it's it's amazing. It's amazing that people are so used to going to Home Depot or Lowe's to get wood when they can when you can get wood that was logs that were that were taken right around this area we mill them and and it's it's wood from right in the same area that you could build a house with what's the most dangerous thing about this work <laughs> well mowing your lawn can be dangerous you know anything that has machinery whirling is potentially dangerous and requires care. I'll say this, that lumber yards, regular lumber yards, often have workers comp uh, compl uh, claims because of injuries. Just a regular lumber yard lifting. We never had one. Never had one. And, which is a very, very unusual, even if we were just a lumber yard selling stuff that had already been manufactured. And uh, we always had meetings to discuss safeties. It's always very important to perceive when you have a close call and, and your lessons learned from a close call. But we never had a claim. And, and the funny thing was that the workers' comp insurance is very high for a, for a sawmill. But there was an incentive that if you went for a certain period of time without a claim, you would get a reduction. And every time we reached that benchmark for a reduction, we'd get the reduction and then the state would add on a surcharge. So we never got to keep the reduction because as soon as we got the reduction, they took it from us and as a surcharge. And the surcharge was to pay for uh, people injured at businesses that didn't have workers' comp insurance. So we not only paid for our, our own workers' comp in, uh, insurance, the, 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 the breaks in the, in, the, in the amount we paid were used to pay for people who didn't have it. That's how business works in Connecticut. Well, gentlemen, you've been very good. I really appreciate it.